Hi guys, Zeno Mastir, and today I'll be talking about pronation, how you should train it, and what are my thoughts on it. Uh, when making this video, I thought this was going to be a relatively simple topic to make a video on, but of course it wasn't. Uh, pronation is a bit more complicated than I originally thought, and I'm going to uh, explain it uh, the best I can in this video to hopefully make you better understand how pronation actually works. So let's get into it. So to start off, pronation should be trained completely statically if you want to train it for strength. And I'll elaborate a bit later, uh, but if you want to train it with a moving motion like this one, uh, that will actually benefit the health of your elbows much more than the actual strength of your pronation. So why should you be training your pronation completely statically instead of using a motion like this? if you want it to get stronger. So I'm going to give you a little example on somebody that is trying to top roll. Of course, this example can be used uh, with any other technique in arm wrestling and move, uh, as long as it has pronation involved. But for the sake of easier explanation, I'm going to use a top roll. So first of all, uh, you, if you try to pronate uh, and open your opponent's hand and wrist with only your pronation, you won't be able to do it like this. If you try it, you simply won't be able to do it because the component that actually opens your opponent's hand and wrist is the hammer. The pronation and the rising are used just to stabilize the wrist so it doesn't go anywhere when your opponent tries to cup in and you know pin you or get into a position that better suits them. So the pronation doesn't do almost anything when it comes to opening the opponent's hand and wrist. It's just to stay there and not move anywhere and the hammer does all the heavy lifting. So it looks like this and it might look like your pronation is actually doing something but it's your hammer that's allowing your pronation to pronate your opponent's hand and wrist, not the pronation itself. Uh, so that's why you should be training it completely statically and that's why we're actually training our rising statically as well uh, as it doesn't need to move anywhere for your, uh, for us to open our opponent's hand or to uh, compromise their rising. It just needs to stay in place and not move at all. Our hammer will do the heavy lifting. So that's why you train ecstatically. I'm going to be showing you only one exercise that I actually found to be extremely useful and good at strengthening the static strength of your pronation. Of course, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't uh, go and try other exercises to see what suits you best of course, keeping in mind what I said earlier, uh, to keep your pronation completely static and try to lift it off the ground or uh, from the pulley and try to find new and interesting ways to uh, strengthen your pronation. But this is what I uh, managed to find that works for me. Uh, so you're going to need a tiny judo belt like I have here uh, to attach to your pulley. Uh, and you're going to be wrapping this around your thumb like this. Again, we're putting the knot close to the hook by just pulling the opposite end. And you're going to need a larger judo belt to put around your body. I showed uh, how you should uh, wrap and get the length of this uh, judo belt correctly in one of my uh, last videos. So if you don't know, go check it out. And you're going to put your arm through it like so and get into a top roll position. Then you're going to take your tiny judo belt and put it around your thumb like so and pronate completely out like so. You want to keep your uh, wrist completely pronated as much as it possibly can at all times and you just want to do a rocking motion uh, by keeping your elbow completely in place so it doesn't move anywhere and your body is going all the way back and carrying your arm with it. And it should look like this. And this will strengthen the static strength of your pronation because you're trying to hold it completely statically. There is no movement involved, just like the rising as well. This will have a bit of uh, pressure put on your rising, but it won't be anything significant that you should be feeling or fearing for if your rising is a bit weaker. So that is how I train my pronation statically. So guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And I really do hope that this video helped you better understand how pronation works and how you should train it. 
Of course, if you agree or disagree or have any other suggestions for a video that I should do, please leave a comment below. I'll be reading them all. And if you like the video, leave a like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.